You are now listening to The Big Trade with Peter Pham, enlightening conversations for maximum market returns. Um, I'd like to welcome Norm Kelly to the Big Trade series. It's um, been uh, quite a year from you, for you, uh, Norm. Uh, you've been very active on social media, and it's been covered quite heavily. Um, I've heard that your Twitter followers have increased quite dramatically, and you're becoming quite the ambassador for uh, the great city of Toronto. Uh, for most of my audience, we have a very international audience, so... I think it would be great if you could provide some context about like the growth of Toronto and the GTA so that people can get a feel for what's happening in this vibrant city and area of the world right now. Well, I'd be pleased to, uh, to do that. Um, I'm uh, one of the very few people of my age that uh, was born and raised in Toronto. Uh, over half of the population of the city of Toronto presently uh, was born somewhere else. Yes. So uh, this has this uh, this city has undergone a uh, almost a revolutionary demographic change you know, over the last four or five uh, decades, uh, and I think it's created one of the great cities of the world. I often get uh, a chance to uh, talk to students that come to uh, City Hall. Uh, the staff seemed to funnel them my way, and I really enjoy meeting them. Uh, and the principal thesis that I convey to them uh, is that in the last two decades of the previous century, Toronto became the premier city of Canada. We won the House League Championship. Uh, and in the first decade and a half of this century, we have emerged as one of the premier cities of the world. We are an incredibly uh, multicultural, dynamic, urban region. Uh, and uh, I think, uh, you know, God willing, and the crypt don't rise, that we will become one of the preeminent cities of the world as we go forward. So, Norm, many people don't know that Toronto is actually one of the biggest cities in North America, the fourth, if I'm not mistaken, and it's grown quite dramatically. I, I guess my question for you is, what are your thoughts about Toronto being able to sustain that and, you know, per, perhaps one day surpassing um, some of these other um, really big cities in the United States? What, what can we do to, to um, continue this momentum? Well, our planners uh, tell us that within the next uh, couple of decades, there will be three leading urban regions in North America, uh, New York City, L.A., uh, and Toronto. Uh, and I think what's going to carry us forward is not only the creativity that a multicultural city generates, you know, the dynamism of that mix, but also because uh, we have a very strong financial base here in the city of Toronto. Our banks, for example, uh, are beginning to uh, buy out the struggling American banks. A lot of Americans don't realize that that TD bank yeah. down the street from them stands for Toronto Dominion. Yes. Uh, we also have uh, four large, vibrant universities and four uh, business-oriented colleges. We have I think uh, uh, very dynamic life sciences section in the city. We have Mars at the corner of college uh, and university. Uh, we've got a vibrant music industry. Culture is thriving here in the city of Toronto. So we've got we've got the basics uh, already in place, and if we continue to attract. Uh, people from all around the world who want to do well, uh, and uh, if we continue to attract the investment that's coming to North America, and especially to Toronto, because this, is, this city is considered a very safe place in which to uh, invest your money, uh, and a place in which your money will grow uh, with confidence, then I think that the future looks great for us. 
Norm, what kind of facilities are being made to allow the G- GTA to take advantage of some of the glo- like the the opportunities that exist globally? Um, it, it sounds fantastic that you know we're starting to get a, a, a multicultural, diverse society. We're starting to create many different, you know, develop ourselves in many different uh, sectors and fields. But you know, what what can be done to support? Um, individuals from, you know, creating small to medium enterprises, from pursuing the arts. Um, I spent a lot of time in Singapore. And do you know, Norm, that in Singapore, they have a division of government that specializes on international investment. Like they will actually subsidize to some extent um, a portion for a particular company, even if it's a small to medium enterprise, to expand internationally. And when I see something like that as a Canadian from Toronto, I'm, I just look at that in awe and wonder, actually. And I was wondering how we can do that. I'm a, also an individual that has directly interacted with like the business development centers there, talking to them about commercial opportunities that exist in, um, when I was in Toronto. And I got nothing but kind of like um, closed door from them because basically most of the things that would get subsidies or support uh, from the state would be like, you know, things related to deep Canadian heritage. And as you know, um, artists like uh, Drake and Justin Bieber are actually transcending, um, you know, Canada and and Ontario and just becoming international sensations. And what I fear is that you actually have to become an international success to some extent sometimes in order to come back and bring that um, you know, cachet back into Ontario, and wh- why do you think this is, or what can be done to to support well, that, You know what? That's that's the old Canadian mindset. Yes, that you're not considered successful unless you've made it uh, somewhere else. Somewhere else, yeah. in the uh, in the in the states. But right. I have to tell you that uh, over the past year. Uh, as I've emerged as the sixth dad uh, in <laughs> Toronto, right? I've been I've been invited uh, by uh, universities and colleges to visit um, the departments that are addressing the very issue that you've raised uh, this morning. Right. Uh, there's a there's an acute awareness uh, at the post secondary level that we've got to focus on creating. Um, businesses to, uh, and I guess before we create the businesses, but uh, the focus uh, has become in a, in trying to shape an entrepreneurial spirit, right? To uh, promote entrepreneurialism, and then once you've got that bubbling out there, to uh, give it a place to go. And so, universities are setting up a lot of programs these days that are geared to uh, creating this spirit Mm -hmm. uh, and then giving it form in one uh, shape or another. Ryerson, for example, has got DMZ. Right. And you'll notice that I pronounced the Z as a Z. (laughs) Uh, And an Americanism, because it doesn't doesn't sound right if you say DMZ. Right. But uh, DMZ, (laughs) the program at Ryerson, is fabulous. I toured it uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, and there you have a collection of uh, young men and women that uh, are coming up with all sorts of ideas. The economic revolution really, I think, has, uh, has um, unlocked uh, this spirit of entrepreneurialism that maybe would not have been unlocked, uh, say, in a previous generation, certainly not in mine. Right, right. Because, Norm, as you know, um, there seems to be a lot of indication about uh, kind of like the lack of labor productivity in um, our terrific city and, uh, and patents, actually, as well. So I, I, I figure, I hope that these things can be kind of addressed. I've, I'm actually past my university education. I've been working in finance for quite some time. And even as, as a, a young minority person that was working in finance for many years, you still get a sense that there was still an established um, 
hierarchy. And as, as you said, the, the face of Ch- uh, Toronto is changing. And I think that should also be reflected on, you know, people of executive level, C-level positions within the business community as well. Especially in well, finance. Well, uh, you know, I've, I've studied uh, and, and taught history over a long period of time. Uh, and uh, the changes are occurring. Right. Uh, and by historical standards, uh, frankly, occurring very rapidly. Mm. Now, when you're living in a system day by day, it may seem slow. Yes. Uh, and, it's, and it's good to have people that are impatient, that want to want to get ahead and uh, move up um, because that's part of what makes the system work. But, uh, you know, things are changing. And you know what? In a lot of these new businesses, the businesses of the future, you have a very strong multicultural context. Right. Right. Um, On on that subject, because you were talking about businesses in the future, we should switch to something a little bit more fun is that you've also managed to transcend uh, Toronto as well, utilizing social media to some extent. You've managed to get yourself into uh, rap battles with um, Philadelphia rappers and you've managed to uh, extend your brand. I I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you're one of the most um, prolific uh, Twitterers or tweeters um, in Canada, actually. Well, you know, a Toronto Life did a profile on me uh, a couple of months ago, uh, and they calculated that I only tweet about seven times a day. Six point six. I have a lot of I have a lot of colleagues on council that would tweet seven times an hour. <laughs> um, but uh, may, uh, if, I think it may be what I tweet about. Yes. Uh, and uh, unlike most people who use Twitter. I don't use it as a as a public diary, uh, and I don't use it uh, as an extension of my political life. It really is a commentary on the city of Toronto. I'm very proud of it, mm-hmm. uh, and on the quirks of modern urban living. Yes. So, uh, uh, and what I try to do is have a mix of silliness uh, and uh, information. Uh, yes. The bottom line is, uh, I'm not trying to make a point. Um, I'm trying to have some fun. Uh, so that's probably it in a nutshell. And I'm very pleased with the reception that I've had out there. And interestingly, over half of my followers, and I now have apparently 270,000 of them. Right. Half of them, half of them are in the states. Yes. Yes. Same thing for me, Norm. Same thing for me. It's like um, a lot of the content that I produce, even though as I'm a Canadian, I produce a lot of content like with the podcast, a majority of my listeners are actually in America, which is interesting. I've published a book with Wiley. A majority of the sales have come from America. It's, it's kind of funny how the reception in America, probably because it's such a big economy and there's just that much more people that for both yourself and me, we're actually getting a bigger audience in America. Well, you know what? Um, they've been family for a long time. Yes. Uh, and uh, so we have uh, very strong cultural similarities. Uh, and yet, despite that, there are distinctive differences. So here we are, here we are in a, a very unique situation where we're perceived as being very similar, and yet in certain areas quite different. So there's an exotic uh, uh, characteristic about us Canadians that uh, Americans enjoy. Yes, yes. So, so Norm, let's talk a little bit about like what you've been noticing in the arts, which like in music, you, you've, I think you've observed um, several weeks ago about the success of like Canadian pop culture and how it's also transcended around the world. Why don't you talk about that for a bit, too? Well, I think that um, anyone uh, of my generation would be shocked at the emergence of the talent that we have here uh, in Toronto. Not only the, the, the guys that take the stage, but the people who produce their work. 
behind yeah. the stage. Um, you know, uh, if you ever saw what passed for music, uh, Toronto music or Canadian music back in the 50s or 60s, you would cringe. Um, today, it's uh, because the world has come here to Toronto, we've been able to uh, take this mix of people and go back to the world very successfully. And I think this is one of the characteristics of a dynamic multicultural society that has emerged here in the city of Toronto. So, so you're very close with um, one of the biggest uh, pop stars in the world, um, Drake and Justin Bieber. What's, what's that all about? Uh, well, Drake um, uh, is uh, someone that I became aware of when I was uh, when I had the pleasure of being the de facto mayor of the city of Toronto in the last year yes. of the previous administration. Uh, and uh, I uh, came to uh, understand that this man personifies the Toronto that I've described during this podcast. Uh, he's young, uh, he's multicultural, he's very talented. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he represents what I would like to think is the brand, the, the Toronto brand going forward. And I can tell you, I've sat on uh, the Economic Development uh, Committee of the City of Toronto uh, uh, over a number of years, and we've been desperately searching for a brand. And every time we pick something, it falls flat. Right. But here we have a brand that he that emerged without any contribution uh, by the city. Yes. But now that it, now that it has emerged, I think the city uh, should do everything it can to um, promote the 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 image that uh, Drake presents to the world, but to pre uh, shape this image in a lot of other areas as well, tourism. Music, um, you know, we have a, a marvelous tourist industry here in Toronto that people are unaware of. But I think that uh, that um, the great influence of the great brand is going to attract a lot more people to Toronto than uh, had come here previously, and as well because the city is being perceived increasingly as cool. This is a cool place, not only which to live. Uh, Toronto entrepreneurs are going to be able to take this perception of the city with them when they reach out uh, to other cities in the world to make commercial connections. I was talking to a young man uh, a month ago who's trying to market a, a new Toronto craft beer. Uh, and he's done well in Toronto. And when I asked him uh, what his plans were in the future, he said, I'm going to take this down to the States. Yeah. And I said, well, how well do you think it's going to sell down there? And he said, when I call people and tell them I'm from Toronto, they go, cool. They actually say, cool. Hey, love to talk with you about handling uh, the product that you've created. So uh, from that experience, I've concluded that Going forward, when a businessman from Toronto indicates that he's from Toronto, not just representing the company, but the city in which the company is placed, I think that's going to be a marvelous advantage that wasn't there previously. So I like to round this up uh, very soon, but uh, you know, we've just uh, Toronto just recently hosted the NBA All Star Game in um, 2015. We were the host of the Pan Am Games. W what was the economic impact of that by having um, you know the world discover uh, Toronto? Well, it was regrettable that we got the coldest winter of yes. the year. Yes, yes, yes. Over, over that weekend. But I'll tell you, everyone uh, that I bumped into from uh, uh, around, uh, basically from around the states, loved it here. They loved the city. They loved the reception. They loved the warmth of the reception and the diversity of it. 
Uh, and I think altogether there was maybe close to $100 million that came into the city. Right. And that's good because generally speaking, if you have a if you have something that appeals just to the city or the region, you're just moving money around. Right. Money that would have been invested somewhere else gets invested in, uh, you know, in a, a sports event. Mm -hmm. But this was new money, uh, and uh, new money uh, really uh, does a better job of uh, enhancing the economy than just simply uh, moving it around. And I'm hoping that as a result of the uh, of the uh, success of both the Pan Am Games and uh, the NBA All-Star uh, Weekend, that uh, people who came to enjoy those two events will go back home, talk to us about, uh, talk to their friends, uh, personally, uh, to the media, and tell them just how wonderful uh, this uh, city has become. It's a cool city to visit, a wonderful place to uh, live. And invest. So, uh, Norm, uh, for someone that hasn't been there, um, if one was to travel there, um, which steakhouse and what other interesting locations, museums and and zoos should they check out when going to Toronto? Well, if you want to, uh, if you want to have a good steak, uh, go to Barbarians. Yeah, that uh, is a restaurant that's been around for a long time and. Uh, and it, it has survived and thrived because its product is so good. Yeah. Uh, and ask, ask to see the wine cellar. This is a, uh, a, a unique experience. I won't say anything more than that. Right. Ask to see the wine cellar. You'll, it'll blow your mind. Um, you've got Casaloma that is now being transformed into uh, a magnificent uh, vehicle for uh, culture. So we're coming in the summertime. Um, you'll enjoy beautiful classical music uh, in uh, the garden. Mm. They're creating um, a top of the line supper club inside there. Uh, they've got um, a wonderful, um, gee, what's the word? Um, a tea. Mm -hmm. You know, like an afternoon tea. Yes. Uh, in uh, at, uh, at at the casa. So, uh, the 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 um, you know, so many ideas are running through my head right now. They're conflicting, and I'm trying to grab <laughs> them and pull them out. In, you know, coherently. The museum is one of the top museums in North America. Right. And if you look at the architecture, you can see why. Um, there's uh, the CN Tower. Go up to the top. Take a look at uh, at uh, not just Toronto, but southwestern Ontario. Um, Ripley's uh, Aquarium, the, mm. one of the best zoos in the world, and uh, cute pandas, panda babies, <laughs> and um, polar bear baby. Do you know? Wow. So Norm, what's I, going I, on? Uh, thank, thanks so much for this summary. I, I hope you invite me to Toronto um, as opposed to not allow me into Toronto. That would be tragic. Well, thank you for this opportunity to brag about Toronto. We hope you enjoyed this mastermind session. If you'd like to contact Peter Pham or Phoenix Capital, please email info at phx-cap.com.